Do you watch YouTube tutorials and then looking at these fat racks that you seemingly can't get a hold of because you don't have Ableton? Are you running out of space in your inserts with effects that don't have any impact on your sound? Like me, for example. Well, do I got the thing for you? Hello guys, it's Skyth. And today I'm going to show you how to make your own fat rack inside of Evil Studio with Hatcher. So, like I said in my intro, you may watch some YouTubers that use fat racks in Ableton. But the problem is that you don't have Ableton, and you don't know how to make adjustment sliders to the distortion, OTT, whatever else you want to automate. This tutorial is meant to help those who are trying to get somewhere with a rack, but they don't want to take up all their slots inside their inserts. So first of all, to even begin with this fat rack that I'm making, there are some things that I need to explain before we get into it. So if you go into plugin database effects and controller, there should be fruity formula controller inside. Now you, what you want to do is you want to drag this inside your patcher. After you dragged it in your patcher, you want to input a special type of formula to get the results. Now this formula is B times C plus one negative C times A. First of all, what you want to do before you get into this is you want to hit compile. And what this basically means is that where A is at, that is the value of zero for C. Where B is at, that is the maximum value of C. So C can be anywhere in between A and B. If A is at 0.5 and B is at one, then the bottom, if you look at the monitor, when C is zero, the bottom will be 0.5. Then C is 100, it'll be one. Pretty straightforward. And you may notice that this is kind of like automation inside Serum. Whenever you drag an LFO and then put it on a wave table position or a filter or volume control, anything like that, this is basically exactly that. You automate within these parameters. This LFO can only automate this part of this knob. So now that we've gotten this out, how do we make this useful? Well, first of all, let's go back to Patcher. Now there are some ways to make this fully automatable with some sliders, knobs, and anything else, like a button, pretty much anything. So for this instance, we're just gonna use a slider. Now we have our first slider here, and as you can see when you go back to the map, there should be a red dot here. What you wanna do is you go to inputs, parameters, and go to the C parameter. Because C is the one that is between A and B, we're going to automate this one, since this one has the most control. Now, we're going to go back into it, right-click, Outputs, Controllers, and Out. So, what you want to do now is, for the C parameter, you want this to go directly to here. So now, when the slider is at zero, this is A. When the slider is up, it goes to 500. So this is your value right here. Now it's time to explain what this output is. Now let's say this one you want to be a drive knob for distortion. Simply hit the hand or wrench looking thing, hit rename, and then you can make this drive. This is your drive knob now. And so for drive, let's just get a fruity wave shaper in here and then go in here, make a shape for distortion, go to the mix, since this is the zero value to 100, and we'll just activate that. And there should be a red dot that appears. So then we drag this to here. Now, if you play a sound, let me just grab a saw waves for simplicity's sake. We're gonna play this. This is before, with drive all the way down. This is with drive all the way up. So clearly, this is already working. Now what about things that are not automatable, like third-party plugins? For example, you could have Camel Crusher as a part of your distortion. Now Camel Crusher is a very powerful tool that helps create rich tones into your bass. First of all, you'll notice that you can't simply just right-click it and hit activate. It's a different way to do this for third-party plugins, and this may vary with plugins that you have. 
For instance, this won't work for things like Sound Geyser. For whatever reason, I wish that was automatable, but you can't. So you just simply go to Inputs, Parameters, and it'll be somewhere in here. So luckily for me, it's right here, Master Mix. Now you should find it somewhere. There's a lot of parameters for plugins, so just make sure you can find it easily. If you can't, you may need to find another plugin. So we're just gonna grab Master Mix, and we're gonna have it there. Make some adjustments to our distortion algorithm, and then it's good to go. As you can see, we now have the stacked effects of Fruity Wave Shaper and Camel Crusher all together. Now, like in our other fat rack we have over here, we have an OTT knob, but we also have OTT Soft, which I may explain how OTT works in depth, but for now, we'll just hang on to the simplicity sake of this video. So let's grab an OTT, and we'll route it through Patcher. Go through the inputs, parameters, go to depth, go to the surface, add a new slider. We'll call this one OTT. Now we have two sliders, one for the drive and one for OTT. So if you notice, we have a second red dot here. Now we just simply drag this over here. And this is assuming that you want the OTT on 100%. This is the sound before the sound after. If you don't want it to go directly to 100, do the same exact thing. Just copy this and then add a value of your choice. And you can route that to the OTT slider. Now you learn the basics of how to make your own fat rack. So this can be helpful for any type of bass you want. I ultimately have two fat racks at the moment, which I use both of them frequently. I have a bass right here that I'll use as reference for how these fat racks work. So for my first one, this is the zero value right now. Now when I turn up the drive, sounds like that. Add some OTT, soft OTT, wideness, hyper, and a phaser. You might find the phaser a little bit weird for a fat rack, but I sometimes like the tonality that a phaser gives. So that's the first rack that we have. Now to showcase the second rack, this is what it would sound like at zero. And at uh, halfway. As you can already tell, there's some different frequencies coming out from the distortion that I have on here. And we have OTT. And everything else is pretty much the same. So that's how you make your own fat rack inside of Apple Studio fully explained. Like I said, I will go into more depth about the OTT soft in another video if you guys request it. And if you guys have learned something from this video, please give it a like, a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this. Thank you guys, and this has been Scythe.